I'm going to ask you to be seated. We're going to come back to worship in a little bit. But I feel like I need to stir you up some with the word that God gave me to give to you. It's found in Mark, the sixth chapter this morning. Mark, the sixth chapter. These next couple weeks, and I don't know how long, I'm believing it'll be three to four weeks that we'll be on beyond the natural man. I want us to go beyond the natural man. What does that mean to live and walk in the spirit? Amen. To walk in the supernatural hand of God beyond you and in you and through you. Amen. How many love to see things happen like that? They're unexplainable. The only thing you can say is look what the Lord has done. Amen. 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 And that's where we're at today. I'm believing today is that day. The sixth chapter. I just want to kind of preface this. The, the text is going to be, we're going to start in verse 34 in a moment. But I want to just kind of lay some groundwork here. First of all, Jesus at the beginning of the chapter is ministering in his own, own hometown. He's, he's at home where he should have been received well. But the Bible says in the fifth verse there, and he could do, or he could do no mighty works there except that he laid hands on a few sick and the people were healed. Why? Because of their unbelief. You'll read that there. You'll find that it was because of their unbelief because they wouldn't receive him. They kept saying, you're just the carpenter boy. Their logical thinking, their natural thinking get caught up in them and it began to just peer down and push down on their, their faith to believe beyond. Amen. And then in the seventh verse there, he calls his disciples together, now the 12. The Bible says he calls his disciples together and he empowers them to do something. He goes, I'm going to send you out two by two and I'm going, to, I'm going to empower you in my name to go out. And he said, what I want you to do is I want you to preach repentance to the souls that you come in contact with. If there's any sick anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith over them. They'll get healed. He said, and if there's any demons that come against you, cast them out in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we find that this is what they did. They went out and began to do this all throughout the society. And then in verse 30, if you come down in that same chapter, then the apostles gathered to Jesus and told them all the things, both that they had done and what they had taught. Okay. And then Jesus said, come on, Let's go aside. And he takes them out into a desert place. He said, because they were so weary because of the press. The Bible says that they were so pushed that they couldn't even have time to eat. They were so involved in ministry that, and so their physical body was wearing down, okay? And so Jesus said, hey, let's go and rest. And now what happens is, because of all of what's been happening through the disciples and what's been happening through Jesus, all the signs and wonders that are being performed, the people are beginning to crowd up around him. And so what happens to them is when Jesus, they, they decide, well, we're going to go across in a boat to get away from the crowd and go out into the desert place so we can have some moments alone by ourselves. <clears throat> but the Bible says that all the people begin to follow them. <laughs> and this what brings us to verse 34. And when Jesus had come out, saw the great multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep, not having a shepherd. So he began to teach them Many things. Now, you got to picture this. Jesus is teaching all day long. And when the day was far spent, and I want to emphasize the word far there, far spent, it means it was late in the evening. The sun was going down, a desert, and his disciples came to him and said, this is a desert place, Jesus. And the already hour is late. Send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. But he answered and said, Faith Family Church, you feed them. You feed them. Faith Family Church, you feed them. Does this just mean physical food? We have a food bank today, and I want to thank God that we have women and people that have been so faithfully involved in that to give to it financially as well as serving it uh, physically to, to feed the hungry in our community. And, and we'll continue to do that. So I want to say to you, I don't want you to think, Pastor, don't believe we're doing some of this. Okay? Pastor's excited to see things are happening. Miracles. We are seeing some healed and we are seeing some delivered. We are seeing new salvations and experiences come. So I don't want you to think pastor's down on us or don't believe that God is moving. Amen. And, and don't you go away here feeling condemned. If you do, that's because you're under conviction and the conviction give way to God. Don't condemn yourself, but just 
answer to God, okay? And so what I want to say to you here, that he said, you feed them, Faith Family Church. And they said to him, shall we go? Here we are. I, 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 I've heard it even today. Here we go. Shall we go and buy a hundred denarius? Why do you keep looking into self? The, the denarius simply was a day's wages, okay? One denarius was a day's wages. And he said, the, the disciples said, if we took 200 days wages, we couldn't feed this crowd. Wow. And yet you're telling me to feed them. God, you're telling me to do things to this property. God, you're telling me to do uh, go out and to reach the souls. How am I going to do this, God? I, I, I fight this too, okay? Your pastor fights this too. And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? And go see. And when they had found out, they said five and two fish. And then he commanded them to say to them, sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in ranks of hundreds and fifties. And when they had taken up five loaves and two fish, he looked up. This is an important thing. We'll talk about this in a little bit. He looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before them and the two fish he divided among them all. And so they all ate and were filled. Amen. Amen. They all ate and they were filled. Okay? And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments of fishes. Now those that had eaten in the loaves were about 5,000 men. Father, please. Again, I just pause for a moment. Help my mind to be clear right now. Let nothing but your word flow through my lips. Let it with clarity come to the hearts of my brothers because God, you've told me, God, that you want to operate in the supernatural here today. That must occur through us, faith believing. God, you want to flow through us, faith believing. And I know my brothers and sisters want to and they are by faith, operating in faith today. But stir us up, God. Stir us up to see the supernatural occur. God, I don't need a sign and, and wonders to believe that you're God, but the signs and wonders should follow those that are of God. So, Lord, help us to operate there. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today, I trust that at the end of this service, we'll activate ourselves to just operate there. The first thought I want to give you this morning on your notes, you look real quickly. Schemes of human reasoning. This is probably the biggest problem in the church world today is we want to reason it. We want to logically think through it. We want to be able to see it before we believe it, Thomas. We want to, you know, that just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Jesus, the sun is going down. This is a desert place. There's no stores open after hours. There's no place to get the abundance of food that we need to feed. Let's just say there was only 5,000, but it's quite interesting as you read the story throughout the other Gospels that there was a boy there with a the lunch. So if there was a boy there, there was probably a mama there. And if there was one mama, there was probably many mothers there. And there was probably many children there. But let's just limit it. Let's, 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 let's logically just kind of put it into perspective. If, if he said 5,000, okay, let's just envision 5,000. Come on. As a pastor, I've been in a lot of banquets. And I've had the privilege of being in banquets where we four or 500 people. And we're trying to serve four or 500 people. And I saw how hours went by before we were able to serve four or 500 people. Because it was all in the natural. We try to do everything what we can do. And that's good, but it's not what God said. God wants you to operate in the spirit, in the supernatural. He's expecting you to live there. David did such a great job these last four weeks in preaching about authentic worship. And authentic worship is nothing more than a lifestyle. It's not about just singing songs and adoration to God. That's a portion of it. 
But the real part is that I'm never outside the presence of God. That I'm always with God and God is always with me and together we operate as one. We operate as one. And, 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 and in that process, we cannot allow logic and the scheming of the natural things of life to be the lack of by which or, or the, by the means by which we operate because there will always be lack. There's always somebody hungry, somebody left undone, somebody in need. But if we operate in the Spirit and walk in the Spirit, the needs will be met. Let's look. The first thought, they had nothing to eat. Again, we see in the Scripture here that in their human reasoning, they were trying to send them away, but Jesus already knew the stores were closed. By the time they get home, they'll be hungry. And, and of course, it, it was a testing because he had just sent these guys out. These 12 had cast out devils. They had laid hands on the sick and they watched the sick recover before them. They had preached repentance. They watched people repent unto God. They had just experienced all that. They were just talking to Jesus about that. Now Jesus sits in, 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 the, in the cool of the, or the setting of the day and it's cooling down and he's out there still teaching. And they, they interrupt him and say, hey Jesus, you've given them enough today. No, I haven't given them enough today. I've got more to give that you know not of. I have meat to eat that you know not of. Amen. That's what's happening here. And, and, and I want you to see now, Jesus still has to operate in the natural man too. He's operating in the physical man. Even though he's walking and living in the spirit of his father, he's still operating in the natural man. That's why you see in that first part of the chapter that Jesus was even fighting to do miracles because of so much unbelief that had God gathered around him. So much unbelief that had gathered, so much logical thinking and so much reasoning that was going on that this just can't be true, that this just can't be possible, that they held back what God was trying to do in the hearts of people because they got their minds thinking on something more than God himself. Amen. You know, today we have so many things, and, and, and I'm going to go a lot of places today, and I'm trying to do it quickly because I know I want to get us here to get us here to let God do what he really wants to do here today. Okay? But I've got to build your faith. I felt like God said, hey, build their faith. Build their faith. Faith comes by hearing. Faith is a substance of things for, hoped for. It's, the substance is the word of God. Faith is the word that's coming to you today. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to believe it and receive it? Or are you going to logically reason your way through it? I saw in uh, Facebook two days ago. It just kind of grieved my heart a little. And I was shocked that I was grieved, but I was glad that I was grieved because God's transitioning my thinking as a pastor. And I'm not just seeing things from the logical thinking anymore. I saw somebody advertising, a dear pastor friend of mine. I love them dearly. I, I, I know they're good men and women of God, but I know my sister has been diagnosed in her later years of life with Parkinson's disease. And she had a picture of Michael J. Fox up there. And, of course, we know that he's one of the Hollywood stars that's suffering with this Parkinson's disease. And it's, it's a horrible disease. It's a hard disease to contend with, obviously, in the natural. And there was this write-up that said, a pill, the, the wonder pill, the, the magic pill, the pill that's going to solve Parkinson's disease. And, and then above it, she, she put, pray that this is so. Hmm. It hit, hit your spirit too, didn't it, brother? Hmm. There's nothing wrong with the thought of medication. Jesus himself said, if you're sick, take a little wine for the stomach's sake. Okay. He's not opposed to crutches and wheelchairs, but he don't want you to stop there. That's a temporary thing. That's a temporary fix. That pill cannot heal. God is the healer. It might temporarily set it aside. It might temporarily slow it back, but I'm telling you, the only healer is God. And when we get our hope in a pill, or we get our hope in a crutch, or when we get our hope in a wheelchair, or when we get our hope on something else, it will always leave you hungry. Amen. It will always leave you lacking. You'll, 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 you'll come up wondering, there's got to be something more. Yeah. This thing is not working. Did that, is this working? Yeah. You just turned me down. That's good. <laughs> I get excited. But we lack when we put our focus on that being my hope. Yes. That's not my hope. Yes. 
the blood of Christ is my hope. The word of God is my hope. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are my hope. We logically reason our way through. Don't stop with logic. It's faith. God didn't say, by logic you'll live. He said, by faith you shall live. It's a desert place. Desert places are a place to be in a place of challenge. Jesus purposely took them out there because he knew out there there would be no provision in the natural. Jesus will lead you out into a desert place. Why do you think he himself had to go out into a desert place? He had to go out into a place where there was no provision other than his word, other than the word from his father. Because he was operating, he was showing us. He did this for Donald. He did it for everybody in this church. He did it for every Christian that would ever live. He, d- he went out into that dry place to show you that in my physical man, I've got to go to a place that I've got to go beyond the physical and I must live and walk and operate in the spirit. And I can take it. If I can do it, if I can overcome in this life, so can you. So can you because I'm going to empower you guys to do it. You're not going to be able to do it in yourself, but you're going to be able to do it in me. And in me, all things, all things, say it with me, all things are possible. All things are possible. All sickness, all disease, all heartache, all depression, all discouragement, all of everything is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it cannot be logically or reasoned through with the natural man. It must be by faith and faith alone. Faith in this word that cannot fail. It will not return void, but it promised it will go forth with or without you. If I got to make the rocks cry out for you, I'll make them cry out, but it's going to go forth and it's going to accomplish what I set it to do. Whether we believe it or not. That's why Jesus said in Luke the 18th chapter, will I find faith on earth when I return? He was challenging us. He wasn't spanking us. He wasn't mad with us. He was broken hearted the fact to think that you wouldn't be in faith when he returns. The coming of the Lord is at hand. The coming of the Lord is at hand, folks. And now more than ever, we better be operating in faith. I can't wait. I can't wait to see that day. But we better be in faith to see that day. The second thought, the language of divine compassion is love that drove Jesus. The love of God that drove Jesus, man, he was driven by a love that's uncomprehendable. Just think about your own life. Think about how many times you've sinned against him, how many times you've cheated against him, how many times you took his name in vain, how many times you have left him without, and yet he loved you unconditionally. How many times you have robbed people and others of blessing, and yet his grace and mercy has loved you beyond even that. How many times we have done things and yet his love continuously comes at us. He chases us down with his love. He makes it so hard for me to run from him that I find myself broken before him. I don't want to run from him anymore. I want to learn to run to him. And please hear my heart. When I talk about things, I'm not mad with my brothers and sisters, but it's quite interesting. It seems like as time goes by, I'm even seeing a lot of my preacher friends that are losing sight of faith and they're just doing religion they're just doing religion I don't if if I got to do that I resign today I don't want to do that I'm not going to pastor a church yeah I heard that you're amen and that I resign today I, I call it I'm a little slow today too but I don't want to be in a place That people just want to do church. I want to be in a place where God can move and do what he wants to do with my heart. Whence he wants to do with my heart. And I just want to live right there. And I believe I've got a group of people that want to do that too because I'm hearing it. So what are we going to do with this? Here we see in scripture his attitude was one of love. 
His attitude was one of grace. Number three, you give them something to eat. How many loaves do you have? What do you have? You know, I, 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 I look at this passage of Scripture and we get down to the attitude of grace here. I'm going to do my best to pronounce this. It's spelled A-N-A-B-L-E-P-O. It's a Greek word, anableblo, simply meaning he looked up and received his sight. Jesus had to look up, just like you and I. The scripture says he looked up, he blessed it, and he gave it. He looked up for a reason because in the midst of all of what he was dealing with, if he, if he, if he didn't have the focus of his father, when he broke that bread, it wouldn't have kept multiplying. He had to get his focus. The Bible says that it simply means when he looked up, the word interpret there, look up, means to receive sight. Abraham, when he went to offer his son Isaac, it's the same word there, look up meaning Abraham received his sight. If you go to the book of Hebrews, it says that Abraham was able to see by faith his son resurrected. Amen. He had to look up to see that. Peter, when Jesus came and said, who does son, son of men say that I am? And they said all these different things. Then he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. What happened is Peter had a moment that he looked up and was able to see. He got his sight. He got his sight this morning. Looking up, he blessed it and he gave it. Provision, an infinite provision of love. That, la that last thought this morning is an infinite provision of love. It says, suitable, satisfying, and sufficient. Suitable, satisfying, and sufficient. I, I look at the scripture, and there's so many scriptures. Let me give you some scriptures this morning. If you were to um, go to Romans, the third ch or sixth chapter, verse 23, the, for the weapons are war, I'm sorry, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Remember, that where sin abound, you'll find that where sin abound, grace much more. That's Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 20. Where sin abound, where it increased, the Bible says that his grace increased all the more. Where sin abound, grace increases. So what that tells me is that his grace doesn't just cover my sin, but his grace keeps multiplying for everything else that he promised it would. You have grace for healing. You have grace for deliverance. You have grace for victories of all kinds today. And it's all yours in the name of Jesus. Please don't operate in the natural. When we get around this today, we're going to activate. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit, we're going to get around this table of God. And we're going to take the elements this morning. And then I'm going to activate you to begin to lay hands on those that need things. And if you're in need this morning, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in a little bit. Because we want to pray over you. Not to, to wear you out or wear you down. But we're going to take authority. I don't want you to beg God, and I don't want you to declare it is his will to be healed. Just say it. It is his will to be healed. He's come to heal all diseases and any man that would believe, okay? It is his will to be delivered from every bondage emotionally that you ever are plagued with, depression, discouragement, whatever it is, God's come to heal the brokenhearted. Okay, he wants to deliver you from it. It is his will for you to be saved, okay? And they're saying, well, pastor, I know, I know for a fact that not all men are going to come to the saving knowledge of Christ. But that doesn't mean it wasn't for them. It doesn't mean it wasn't for them. It doesn't mean, I know that not everybody's going to get healed, but it doesn't mean that it wasn't for them. Okay, I know that there's a lot of things that will happen in the lives of people because they hang on to it. They put their trust more in the thing uh, that they're believing for than the things of God, the word of God. And so in turn, they get what they believe for. According to your faith, the Bible says, let it be done. So what do you put your faith in? I'm tired of putting my faith in things that leave me hanging. I've been doing that 50 some years. And, and I still fight with it. But I'm no more. And I'm surrounding you, myself with people. And I'm going to keep preaching to you until we all look like this. Until we all live like this. And when we do, we won't have time enough to build buildings big enough to hold them. Because God has already shown me a vision out there in the parking lot. Before I became your pastor, when I closed my eyes, I saw this place swarming like an anthill. I've not lost sight of that. That was for this place. That was for this now. And I believe it's starting right now. I believe it's been started long ago, but I believe it's going to start happening right now. We're going to start seeing the results right now, today. 
I'm not going to allow myself to operate by what I see, but by faith. By faith. Provision. 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 We look at this. It was obviously suitable because they all ate enough to fill themselves up. It was sufficient in the fact that there was more than enough. And I'm telling you right now, you serve a God that has more than enough. I want you to meditate. Close your eyes with me. We're going to bring this to a close. Close your eyes with me. Meditate on you and God. Forget about your wife, your kids, the worries of today. Just put it aside. What has God shown you right now that you need? You know there's a lack in your area. It could be discouragement. Your heart could be so discouraged. It could be sickness that you're fighting with. It could be financial need. It could be anger and frustration. It could be whatever. There could be a multitude of different things happening right now. But you have a God that can meet everyone. He's omnipresent, and he knows what's happening in your heart before you even know it. So I want you to focus in on him. What do you need today? Then from that focus, I want you to now begin to speak God's word over your matters. Because, Pastor, I don't know a scripture that talks about this. I don't know a scripture. What am I supposed to do with this? What you do with it, if you don't know a scripture, you come up to the altar and let pastor give you one or let somebody give you one today. Remember, I want to remind you, the lady said all it took was the crumbs. Even the dogs need the crumbs off your table, Jesus. So if you're feeling like a dog today and really struggling with life, just one crumb. We've been sowing seed for a long time here. The word is God's seed. I've been preaching for five years faith. In fact, Sister Judy said to me, Pastor, you've been on faith ever since you've been here. And I can't relinquish because God said for us to live by faith and not by sight. And so I'm going to keep preaching it until we live it totally. Okay? And that's what it's about here today. So it's by faith in his word. Answer this with me, just in your head. Is God Almighty a liar? Come on, is God Almighty a liar? Can God fail? Okay. So you have enough word in you right now to meet every need represented in your life. That's how easy the word is. It's just that... We know they can't. Now, this is, the, this is the real hard one you got to answer, and you might not want to answer this out loud. Do you believe he wants to do it in and through you and for you? Do you believe as an individual that it's for you just like it's for pastor and everybody else? Do you believe he wants to heal you? Do you believe he wants to deliver you? Do you believe that he wants to work the miracle in you and in through you? then have it then have it be persistent like that woman to break down hell's accusations hell's bringing accusations against you it's not possible I've been in church for 40 years and it hadn't happened stay one more day then stay one more day stop don't believe the lies of the enemy. Bring every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God's word and bring it captive to the obedience. Obey God's word. Obey God's word. Do it one more time. See, the devil's about to break, but you don't think he is. The devil's about to flee, but you don't think he is. But I'm telling you, he is. Keep submitting to prayer. Keep submitting to God. Keep taking authority over it. Keep taking authority over it. Keep trusting God at His Word. Today's the day for it to break. I'm convinced that today, many of you are going to leave here today delivered. I've been praying for it. I've had others praying for it. We've come in here with faith, believing, and I'm not leaving with my baggage anymore. I'm not allowing you to leave with your baggage anymore. Stop reasoning your way out of it. You told me, God said, he wants to do it in me. He wants to do it in me. That he's more than enough. He cannot fail. He's not a liar. His word is what he said it would do. So let's do that today.